Welcome back to Maria with the life struggles topic. And again, I still have uh, my friend here, Maria Almansar, who is joining us to joining us tonight because uh, all all the guests supposedly actually here. No, well, uh, they supposedly on Skype as uh, you know, like Maria, but I think. Um, they get intimidated my, by my strong uh, attitude. No, just kidding. But anyways, yeah, they couldn't. <laughs> by the way, Maria, you look fabulous today, sweetheart. Oh, thank you so much. You look gorgeous. You look so gorgeous. Oh, thank yeah. you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put you in. You can go ahead and do your shout out once again, all right? So thank you so much for letting me shout, make a shout out to my, to my family and my friends. Thank you. All right. So, um, okay, hold on. Okay, hold, just give me a moment. Because, okay, go ahead and do your shout out one more time. Wow, you have a lot of fans there. Yes, I do. I, I have a lot of family down in New York, and I also have a lot of family in New Jersey. They're yeah, everywhere in Miami. Hi, Diamina, Hesu, <laughs> Josie, Lise, Rafi. Hello. Hola, hola. ¿Cómo están todos allá? ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Anyways, we're back again. Uh, I um, apologize to all our viewers out there, so please come back. <laughs> uh, we get uh, we got our um, show keep on cutting off. I don't know why. Uh, never happened before. It's probably because um, Joe is not here again. <laughs> so Joe, we miss you, by the way. And he's going to be back here next week. And thank you so much to all uh, the viewers out there and to all the supporters. And I just want to actually mention this, but the Iron Monk Tattoo Society, it's by Pecos. I believe it's Pecos and Flamingo. That's where it was. Lo it is located. If you guys need some tattoos to be done on your body uh, please give me a call I have a really good pricing for you guys we can get uh, the best discount that you guys have they are actually uh, sponsoring my show uh, tattoo says uh, iron monk tattoo society and by the way um, by the way uh, we still have miss miss Maria here with us and I just hope that we can get Mr. Nick Payne on the show and also Mr. Eric Hoyt of Las Vegas Boulevard. He actually does a lot of commercial shoot, um, commercial filming here in Las Vegas. Uh, I want to say hi, Eric. I hope you are watching, although you cannot make it. I know that you are a busy man, but uh, we'll actually connect. And also, I want to say hi to Lorraine Yarde. That's my friend. Uh, Lorraine Yarde is uh, building up. Maria, he, she's, uh, she's creating an um, organization for women's only. Oh, great. Yes. So we're going to be actually taking all the strong and powerful women here in Las Vegas. And uh, we're going to actually make, uh, you know, 
we're gonna make a really good thing out of this one I know for sure it's a good one all right and also I want to say hi to family in or my friends and my auntie Emily in San Mateo California San Mateo California she her and her um, kids are watching our show so thank you for your support Yes, it's and I am so grateful, uh, honestly, we, I'm so grateful for the, all these people. But anyways, I wanna, I, I'm trying to see who is actually in, and here you go. Anyways, uh, well, we are uh, still um, doing our uh, Life Struggles episode, and like what I was mentioning earlier, Maria, is what uh, get me to this point of having... Um, having a life struggle uh, um, topic is because we had our friend who is an actor uh, I don't know exactly what happened but I know that he been through for the for the past few days in a life struggle he start calling his friend he actually uh, put on Facebook about he said he said he's done and he said thank you for all your friendship and everybody actually like oh, hello what's going on what's going on is he okay uh, is there anything wrong uh, hi Jen Lee. really don't want to say anything you know like they want to keep it private but it's always good to ask you know are you okay um, what's wrong uh, I know that uh, for me in particular, uh, I was homeless at one point, and uh, I didn't have any friends like I have now. I I was just starting, to, you know, to 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 get to know Vegas, and so I was out on the street for a while, and uh, I had to go to a homeless shelter, which now I remember the name, and it's called Shade Tree. And uh, Sweet Tree actually helped me so very much uh, for the process of me moving and, and moving forward and getting a job. So, you know, if anyone is out there, even though they say, oh, no, I don't want to go into a homeless shelter, and I don't want this, and I don't want that, um, you know, these are uh, resources that are available. The only thing with it is, is that, you, you know, there's a waiting period. Everybody's situation is new, unique. Uh, my situation was that you know I got evicted out of my apartment and uh, I lost everything, and so uh, it was very hard for me to accept. In which case, a lot of people who become homeless, it's very hard for them to accept that they uh, have lost their belongings, belongings that are very, uh, very that they hold very dear to them. And so when you lose everything. You learn to appreciate the little that you have. Fortunately, right now, I am in a good place. You know, I, I, I live now in an accessible space, which they help you to, to get an apartment and to live a better quality of life. Um, I, I also forgot to speak out on people who are disabled. Uh, a lot of disabled people are homeless. A lot of vets are homeless. And so we uh, overlook that. You know, and we and we all and we look at those people and we and, and we look at them like, God, oh, you know, can't you do better? It really is very hard to <laughs> pull yourself back up again after you're homeless. Uh, I know, and you've been through that. Uh, it's it's very hard to accept, especially when you have you know, children who are homeless and, and and with your children, with your family. It's very hard because. Uh, uh, when you have children and you're out on the street, uh, you're scared that something might happen to your children. The person that you're thinking of is, how will I be able to feed my family? How? how where, where will my next meal be? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, for those people who do live out there with their children, it becomes a, a very traumatic experience. Not only for the mother and for the child, but also for you know for the husband you know who who has to uh, uh, take care of his family. And it's Where are you from? Life. 
Where are you originally from? from New York City, Flushing, Queens. New York City. Well, you know what? Uh, the thing is, even though people go through uh, this kind or this type of struggles in their life, whatever it is, uh, we have that survival mode that we can fight for it. And like uh, what I keep on saying from the first segment, we only have, you know, the only uh, outcome of all of this um, struggle is to learn from it. To learn from it, what should we do, you know, uh, what we should avoid to get back to the same situation. And like what I said, we can uh, determine what the future bring us. And even though we try to avoid uh, uh, avoid to be uh, in the same situation, we still still go th go through no matter what. And uh, uh, like what I was saying earlier was um, one of our friend uh, who been in that situation few days ago. Who actually um, we thought that he's gonna end his life. And I know he's he's uh, really he, he has that fighting spirit. He is a very positive woman and a positive man and. You know what, I really love what he uh, posted today. He, he posted uh, fair, 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 failures and loss act as motivation. That's what he said. And the, I was like, oh my God, yes. Did, have you seen that? Yeah, I have seen it. Yes. He's a very, po he's very positive, very positive person. And um, that's very good because when you have a positive frame of mind, you're able to accept things and go through whatever you're going through a little bit more better. Always, I always tell people that never lose your faith, you know, uh, try to stay positive in a situation where really it's hard to stay positive. Yes. You know, it really is hard to stay positive, but when you have support from family and you have support from friends, it makes a whole lot of difference, you know, it really does, it makes a whole lot of difference. And you know, that's a good point, Maria, because I was saying earlier, I uh, tend to be uh, the strong that I am, very independent, and sometimes uh, asking help from other people, it's so hard for me. Um, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, I don't want to um, um, inconvenient anybody because of what I'm going through. And sometimes I said, no, never mind, I'm not going to ask. And one, um, he, one of my friends, he's a doctor, Dr. K, um, he told me that, why don't you go ahead and ask for help? And I said, no, no, I don't need it. And he said, no, you need it. You need it right now. So uh, that being said, I was like, okay, um, I'm going to call them. And he said, he made a really good point by telling me that uh, you'll never know who is out there to actually extend their helping hand. So, and uh, with my uh, past experience, I tried all those things and it never worked out well to me. That's the reason why I stopped seeking or asking help from anybody. That's the reason why. But anyways, um, anyways, go ahead, uh, Maria, I'm gonna put you on the thing because I have a call coming in right now. Go ahead. Yeah. May want to help you may want to ask people to get through their struggles. Yes. Um, you know, personally, um, I found friends that are the angels, uh, Percy, Willie, Karen, Bernie, Dad, and Kelly. These people have given me so much support in my life, and when I was really out and, and, and really down in the dumps, let's just put it that way, they helped me through a very difficult time. And so, you know, this is why we need to open up to people. Sometimes when we don't open up and we don't ask for help, well, who's going to know? You know? Exactly. Uh, how do you know that they want to help you? How do you know that they're not wanting to extend a hand, a friendly hand to you? You know, it's like you need to ask and not, and not be all like scared not to ask. Yep. You know? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like I said, yeah. 
Well, anyways, uh, Maria, uh, we're going to end up our third segment and we're going to come back in the fourth segment. And uh, viewers, stand by, tune in. We're going to be actually um, wrapping up what we talk about and also we will uh, be mentioning some few other uh, organizations and uh, other ways how to actually seek help where we, we can seek help and we're going to be actually uh, discussing a few of these organizations who help a lot of people inside um, all over the nation. All right? So if you guys have... have yes. To, to put on my site, you know, telephones and stuff like that. Yes. On the first segment, uh, the first segment that I was alone, <laughs> I uh, I offered. So, so we'll, we'll speak further on that. All righty, so uh, stay tuned and we will be right back. <laughs> 